Hey everyone, in today's video I'm going to be showing you all how to get RetroArch up and running on the Wii U. But before we do that, I just want to make it known that not all emulators currently function on RetroArch. For example, I couldn't find cores for the PlayStation 1, Nintendo 64, or the GameCube, so I'll have to make another video covering those at a different time. Uh, but in today's video, we're going to be covering the NES, the Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, the Game Boys, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, and uh, Atari 2600. So that's good, you know, five systems we can get up and running real fast, and hopefully I can make this a short video for everyone. So let's just jump right into it. All right, so we're really only gonna be using one site for this whole thing, and that's gonna be RetroArch. I'll leave a link in the description below. But once you're on their site, you're just gonna go to download, scroll down, and we're gonna be looking for our system here. You can see there's a bunch, PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, Wii U right here. So we're just gonna hit download and let that do its thing. Once you're all done, you're gonna see RetroArch RPX in your download folder. Just right click it and go to Extract 2. This is gonna take a little bit because it's got a lot of crap to unpack. So let this do its thing now and we'll come back. All right, and when it's done, you're gonna see you have two files, your zip folder and your extracted folder. So obviously we're only gonna need the extracted one, so don't worry about that for the rest of this video. All we're gonna do here is open up our SD card if you have that plugged in already. And on the root of the SD, we're gonna drag a RetroArch right in there. Really that simple. Now, once again, this has a lot of crap, so I'm gonna keep siphoning through all these downloads here, so I'll see you in a second. All right, now that that's done, you'll see your RetroArch folder right on the root of your SD, which is perfect. And we're gonna open that up, and we're gonna make two folders inside of this. One, if you're gonna insert any BIOS in the future, whether it be for PS1 or whatever you may need it for, you're just gonna make a BIOS folder, and any BIOS you have, you're gonna throw it in there. I don't know why I made that a capital. Let's just make that, it bothers me that they're not all matching. No, it's still the same. I'll have to change it. Then change it. Look at that, fixed. Follow me for tutorials. Anyways, getting back to business, the second folder you're gonna make is your ROMs folder. So new folder, ROMs. And inside of here, you're just gonna separate them by system. So if you have, for example, I'm doing five today. So I'm just gonna go new folder, new folder, new folder, new folder, new folder. And I'm just gonna name these SNES. NES, Sega, you guys can name these whatever you want, and it's just Ega, Sega, Atari, and I'll just call this one Game Boys. And all you're gonna do is toss your ROMs in here. You can see I already have mine picked out right here at the bottom. So for the NES, I have Excite Bike. I'm gonna toss that in. And the good thing about RetroArch is you don't need to extract these to get them to run. They can run in their zip folders. Uh, Donkey Kong Country for the Super Nintendo. Pitfall for the Atari. Comic Zone for Sega. And lastly, I chose a ROM hack, which I'll reveal at the end, for the Game Boy. Next up, we're gonna back up here and we're gonna go to our Wii U apps folder. And in here, going back to our download, you'll see we also have a Wii U folder. Open up the apps folder in there, and you'll see a bunch of things. These are all basically shortcuts that can go on the homebrew launcher to uh, launch certain cores. So you can like boot up into RetroArch, but for Atari, just automatically. I'm not gonna do this because this is a lot of stuff to have in the homebrew launcher. I'm just gonna take the main folder here, RetroArch, and drag that in. And that's going to go right into the apps folder for your Wii U. Pretty simple. And honestly, that's it. We can take the SD card out and we'll head back over to the Wii U. All right, so assuming you just turned on your Wii U just like me, the first thing that we're going to do is start up Haxigy, which you can see is behind me here. So just boot into that. It takes a second for it to load, so just give it a moment. And when it's all done, now we'll be able to launch custom firmware. So let's open the Homebrew Launcher and just give that a second to start up. And inside of it, we'll be able to see our RetroArch folder that we put in there a little bit ago. So let's go ahead and open this up and hit load. 
And here we are, we have RetroArch. So the first thing that you're gonna wanna do once you come in here, it's not mandatory, but go to the online updater and you're gonna wanna update most of the things that you have here. For example, you wanted to uh, update installed cores, content downloader, uh, update assist, uh, update cheats if you want cheats in there, pretty much all these things. If you want them updated, go ahead and do it. I'm gonna skip that part for now, but once again, uh, feel free to do so. From here, all we have to do is go to load core. We're gonna select the system that we're gonna be doing today, and for me right now, it's gonna be, uh, let's do Super Nintendo to test. So we'll do this SNEX 9X 2010. You can see they have different versions, 2005, 2002, but I'm gonna go with 2010, just hit A. And this is basically gonna boot RetroArch up, so you can start Super Nintendo games by selecting load content. From here, you have to navigate where you put your games. So we'll have to go into the SD, which is where my games are held, go into RetroArch, go into ROMs. For me, we're doing Super Nintendo. And here's Donkey Kong. So just hit A, browse archive, start the game, choose the emulator. Once again, I'm going with 2010. And just give it a second, see if it starts up. And it did just that. And another cool thing too, versus uh, doing emulation on the virtual Wii, you're actually able to use your gamepad. So you can kind of see this here. Let me get the game started so you can kind of see here that Donkey Kong is playing on here, which is pretty cool because now you can go in the other room. You can sort of play this, uh, you know, around the house. You got to be near the console, of course, but still pretty neat. So let's go ahead and just start a quick game to prove that it's working. And I'll, maybe I'll test one or two more. Well, actually, I have to because I have that ROM hack. Maybe I'll do the ROM hack one next. I'm over here looking at the pad when I can just look at the screen. Let's fucking go! Don't even want him. I don't want him. Oh, and I'm dead. It works. So yeah, you guys get the point. Now, if you want to change a game, you can hit the home button on the Wii U and then go to quick menu and you should be able to close content. And now from here, it's just switching these up so you can run a different system. So uh, right now, for example, let's go to load content. We're gonna find our game again. So retro arch, ROMs, Game Boys, and we'll do the ROM hack. So go to browse archive, team training, choose your emulator. I'll do VBA next, why not? And we'll just give this a second to boot up. Pokemon, <gasps> he wouldn't do that because I didn't. I saw this and I was like, yeah, I need, I need to give this a shot. Now, if you get something like this that pops up, the 1M sub circuit board is not installed. This is an old issue that actually happens pretty frequently on emulators when you run ROM hack versions because of the, the flash size. So if you would go into the settings, you could change it to 128K, I think it was, and this would run fine. I don't know how to do this on RetroArch, but to bypass this, if you ever want to save, you can hit the home button. And when you go down, you can see you have save state. So you can automatically hit A to save state and then hit A to load state. And then it won't be an issue anymore. But yeah, it's pretty neat. I'll just get this started. Maybe I'll skip till after the intro here in the game to make it look a little more interesting. Oh no, it's TN. What am I ever going to do? <laughs> <laughs> and I think the last thing we cover real quickly will be a Sega game. So load content, SD. I know you can make um, like pins of your folders kind of with this. That way you can select games a little faster. But this is fine for right now. All right, so now we're playing Comic Zone for the Sega Genesis. And it boots up. But I won't do too much gameplay. I think I'm gonna end the video right after this. I just wanna make sure it actually starts, just to prove to you guys that I'm not insane. Night of the Mutants. All right, let's do it. I actually really enjoyed this game when I was a kid. 
Let's see. Give me this, give me this, give me this. Let's go! Stop it, Jeremy, you're not giving him a chance. Stop it, Jeremy! Stop it, Jeremy, you're gonna kill him! Bitch. Bitch. He found out my weakness. Low kicks. All right, <laughs> the, the game works. So I think we're gonna call it here. Uh, this was actually really fun to do. It's pretty interesting that it covers multiple systems and pretty quickly with uh, easy installation. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to make another video though covering uh, injections for games or covering emulation through the VWE. That way people can play their N64 games and stuff like that. So those videos are coming. Uh, but if you need any help with this, leave a comment down below. Feel free to join the Discord and I'll catch you guys later. Adios.